Thank you everyone for subscribing to Infinitely Productions. If it is you have not done so, please click the bell and subscribe and we hope you enjoy our content. The power of a mob lady has always been defined by the men around her. Virginia Hill succeeded more than most. And yet after the flamboyant life she led with the mob, she was abandoned, left powerless and vulnerable. But that glamorous facade can be alluring. In the 1940s, a Jewish girl on the Lower East Side of Manhattan grew up wanting nothing more than to be just like Virginia Hill. Arlene Weiss Brickman got her wish. But in becoming a mob lady, she lost everything. As the leading mob lady witness before the Kefauver Commission in 1951, Virginia Hill was living proof that a certain kind of woman could wield influence within the Mafia. Her performance made a powerful impression on a New York City teenager named Arlene Weiss. Arlene would become a mob lady herself and then use the power of American justice to turn against the mob. Even as a child growing up on the Lower East Side of Manhattan, Arlene was no stranger to the world of gangsters. Her maternal grandmother, Ida Bloom, ran a funeral parlor and was a mob lady in her own right. Her place of business was a hangout for Jewish mobsters, many of whom were establishing ties to the traditional Sicilian mafia. She had an undertaking parlor upstairs and she had the bookmaking concession downstairs and what they would do is pay her by the week for letting them have the business. They would put the money in the caskets downstairs and she would take money out of the caskets like a little pin money. Naturally, Grandmother Ida was a big fan of the Mafia. She loved them because they were dangerous. And not only were they dangerous, but she made a lot of money with them. So uh, she loved them even better. Arlene's father, a Rolls-Royce salesman named Irving Weiss, did favors for the mob whenever he could, and even owned a Miami Beach bar with a high-ranking member of the Italian mafia named Joe Adonis, a man renowned, among other things, for his own affair with Virginia Hill. Irving Weiss would bet on horses with his mob friends, and Wiley told his daughter he didn't want her getting mixed up with them. He did nothing to prevent it. I always found myself at the racetrack with my father. I always found myself at the fights with my father. In other words, I was always with my father with all these different men, even though he never wanted me to be around them. But the men wanted to be around Arlene. They began giving her gifts and money in return for sexual favors. At the age of 14, she met and became involved with a soldier in New York's Bonanno crime family named Tony Mira. Tony, I would do anything. I didn't even give a shit if I got money, I didn't get money. But over time, Arlene discovered that the New York wise guys made lousy lovers. I have been around a lot of mob guys. And they are the worst lovers in the world. They don't care if you, if they satisfy you, you have an orgasm or whatever. They're mainly concerned, let's do it, get it over with. And while you're in bed, they're telling you about, uh, let's see now, what are we going to play with a football team for Saturday or Sunday? What number am I going to play for the day? Who am I going to kill? Uh, how am I going to kill them? At 17, Arlene got involved with a friend of her father's, a middle-aged mobster named Nate Nelson. The mob was unhappy with Nady because he talked too much. One day in the fall of 1951, Arlene stopped by Nady's apartment to get some shopping money. When I got there, um, I saw another friend of my father's coming out of his apartment who was involved with the Italian mob, the Genovese family. And his name was Jimmy Doyle. And there he was coming out of the apartment and put his hat up to his head, carrying his coat. I'll never forget that day. And there inside, I discovered Nady on the floor. It was a horror to see. He was dead. And I figured, well, I was scared, pardon my language. And I figured I wasn't going to be the one to report this and get involved in it. But Jimmy Doyle used the situation to intimidate Arlene and force her to have sex with him. 
what I was doing is keeping myself alive, hoping and praying that he wasn't going to kill me for keeping his secret. A shocking turn of events for a young mob lady who had thus far succeeded in using sex to manipulate her wise guy boyfriends. Arlene was scared enough to make her first, but not final, exit from the mob. In 1956, at the age of 23, she was in a doctor's office getting her ninth abortion. And there, while I was having an abortion, that is sitting in the office, I met up with the only husband that I ever married, was Norman Brickman. The couple had a baby girl, Leslie. But Arlene soon discovered that her husband, who worked in the New York garment district, running a fur cleaning business, was not only stealing furs he was supposed to be cleaning, he was also cheating on her. She took revenge by turning him into the cops. I think that was my first time involved with law enforcement because Norman wasn't going to get away with this. I made sure Norman spent a lot of years in jail. Armed with the lesson that if she ever again needed to take revenge, she could use American justice to exact it, Arlene returned to her first love, the mob, and did so with a vengeance. Because I used to do all these crazy things, going out with all these different wise guys, running around. I mean, uh, you see women running around with mink coats and nothing on underneath? I did that. With her parents taking care of her baby daughter, Arlene, the reincarnated mob lady, hit the New York mob party circuit. I used to wear dresses that way I couldn't even go to the bathroom in. I couldn't even pick them up. And I gave the best around and I knew it. So, I mean, nobody could resist me. Arlene didn't want to marry any of the gangsters. One brush with that institution had been enough. What she wanted was to be a mafia mistress. A mob wife never goes anywhere. You gotta really feel sorry for her. A mob mistress? Mob mistress is a woman that goes out with a married man, uh, knows everything about his business, must keep her mouth shut, and for keeping her mouth shut, she's well paid. Arlene made it a point to sleep with members of every one of New York's five major crime families, including mob boss Joe Colombo. It was a calculated move that I could get involved with every one of them and that they would always do me a favor. I was very good to them and they would always do me a favor, I thought. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to our channel and check out more content. Feel free to give us your feedback and suggestions on who we should do next in the comments. This is Infinitely Productions. We love you.